Hey guys, welcome back to Indoor Reef. So on my lighting deep dive video, I promised if we managed to get 50 likes on the video that I would do a par measurement on my tank. And we did that, so today, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Welcome back to all the regular viewers. For those of you who are new here, I make videos all about keeping a reef aquarium. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then consider subscribing so that you can follow along as I release new videos. To measure the par today, I'm using a Senai par meter with a handy little stick and 3D printed holder which I bought from Johnny at Aquaprint. This is much easier than hand holding the sensor and no doubt produces more accurate results. Now before I filmed this video, I actually took a few par readings myself in advance. And what I will say is I was completely shocked by just how high the par is in this tank. So if you stick around to the end, I'll explain why I think this tank works so well with such a high par. So the readings I'm taking were taken at about 2.15 uh, in the afternoon and my lights reached their peak about 2.30. So when you do see these readings, bear in mind that this is probably the maximum that the lighting schedule is going to get to. I'm going to put the lighting schedule up on the screen so you can have a look in case you're interested. Just as a reminder, it's the AI Saxby setting um, on the on the AI lights. So uh, I've got two Hydras here and uh, AI Prime. They're both the HD, the older Wi-Fi model. Of course, I've adjusted the intensity a little bit and I think I moved the schedule left and right. But other than that, um, I didn't alter any of the spectrum or anything like that. Besides that, I've also got the two LED strips um, here. Anyway, if you do want to know more about the lights generally, you can go and check out the other video that this is a follow on to. Anyway, let's get on to actually taking some par readings. So what I've done, I've performed a screen capture of the um, readings that come in from the Senai par meter and you can see them up on the top left of the screen there. So I've tried to keep everything in sync. So hopefully I have, um, seems to be pretty reasonable. So I started off down in the bottom left hand corner um, where I've got some Zoas and also down where my Akens are. And you can see it's round about um, 400 par, so um, I don't stop the wave makers when I take my par readings because I think this is more accurate of what the corals are actually going to see. It does mean the readings jump about a little bit more. But I think what we can see from these readings so far is I've actually got quite an even light spread across all of this part of the tank, which when I designed my lighting, this was always the plan, to be honest. You know, one of the reasons I put one hook in the middle, so the AI Prime and the Hydras on the outside, was to try and create that even spread. And I adjusted the distance in from the edges so that I tried to create as even a spread as possible over the tank. So you can see here in the middle, it's five or six hundred. But I'd say that the spread from kind of left to right in the tank is quite even and also... I guess front to back. So the main thing that's influencing kind of how high the par is, is how high in the tank it is. And I guess this is exactly what we'd expect and also what we'd want. You can see now here up on the very top, up by the barley shortcake is right in the center under the lights. We're at about 700. Dropping down onto this front ledge, I guess we'd say a little bit there. Um, the par drops off a little bit, but again, quite consistent for that height in the tank. Now here we're going over towards the Millipora I've got there just for fun. I wanted to measure the, the frag rack because, um, you know, I always try would say to keep the frags a little bit uh, lower, but um, you can see even the frag rack there, they're still four, um, four or five hundred. And that probably explains why some of my Zoas are struggling a little bit. So now moving down, what you see here actually is it's 300 or so directly over the milk of Stylophora. But then if you move to actually where that um, torch skeleton is now, I thought the torch was maybe getting too much light. But looking at this, it's coming up almost zero. You saw 10 come up there. It seems like there's a big drop off on the amount of light at that point. So um, yeah, I'm wondering whether I maybe need to put like a 
Cyphastria in there or something like that, something maybe quite a low light coral. Um, so then here I'm kind of moving over to where uh, the gold hammer is more in that range that you would expect to see for LPS corals. So at that point I did continue to take some more par readings but I don't want to bore you so if there are any readings I missed that you'd like to know just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So now let's jump back to the question that I posed at the start of the video about why is my tank successful with such a high par. So I quickly want to address why I think my tank works so well with what might seem such a high par. So I think that my light uh, spectrum is very white and I think because of this I need to have higher par to make sure that my corals are getting enough of the parts of the spectrum that they actually need. So for example the blues. So I think if you're running a, a much more blue spectrum then you're potentially running it much more efficient. So if the corals only looking for those certain parts of the spectrum and you're running it a lot more of that energy that you measure when you measure par is probably going into the coral. So if you're running let's say only blues, are, so you're effectively you're 100% efficient and you've got a par of 200 versus a par at 400 which might be much whiter across the spectrum, got a lot of parts of the spectrum which aren't needed, then you're maybe running 50% let's just say for example so therefore your power would need to be 400 to deliver the same energy now I don't know if this is right please leave a comment let me know what you think but I wonder if this could be why we often hear about when people used to use the older styles of lighting like the T5 and the halides um, and they used to put out these ridiculously high par numbers but when people switched to LED lights, they suddenly said that was too much light. And I'm wondering if that's because there was a lot more white in the spectrum. One more thing, thank you so much to all you guys who regularly follow along on the channel. You know, I really enjoy reading the comments you leave. I learn from you all the time. And so I just want to say a really big thank you. And if you're not subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing. It means you're more likely to get notified when I release new videos and also it helps the channel out a lot. Anyway guys, that's all for today. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, leave a like. And until next time on Indoor Reef, keep it stable, keep it fun and keep reefing.